Two broken gold. So this week we're continuing on with the work on restoring our King Amusement Company supersonic rocket ride. And I think it's time to tackle another part of this project. This box contains the chaser. It's uh, part of the uh, paint peeling off the inside of the lid. So this is an electromechanical chaser unit. It's just a motor with a spinning disc and a couple of cams down here that operate switches. These are the switches here. Uh, the wire, this brown wire coming in, uh, that's where your hot wire comes in from your uh, electrical supply and it goes out on these three different circuits. So there's three different uh, circuits in the light channels and uh, when these flash it makes them look like they're chasing. Uh, so it needs a lot of work. Uh, we need to clean it up. Obviously the paint on the uh, cabinet itself is all peeling very badly. So uh, we got uh, quite a bit of work ahead of us here. I'm gonna pull these off because this is all gonna be replaced. all corroded onto the shaft. I believe you can change the speed of this motor by rotating this core. And we will find that out when we go to put it all back together. So I'm going to stick with my old standby and soak these in the evaporust overnight. I just wanted to make a quick announcement here. In two weeks, I will be traveling down to Fort Meade, Florida to attend the Florida Flywheelers Antique Engine and Tractor Show. Now, on Saturday of that event, that'll be February 26th, there's going to be a gathering of YouTube creators with a meet and greet. Uh, so if you wanna meet uh, people who do machine shop type content like uh, Adam Booth or Keith Rucker, Keith Fenner, they are all scheduled to be there and I will be in attendance. So if you wanna meet any of us and you're in the Tampa area, uh, come on by. All right, so we're gonna pour another one of these hood ornaments and uh, doing it pretty much the same as last time. Although I did uh, heat this thing up in the oven for uh, about 30 minutes at 100 degrees Celsius. So it is pretty hot and hopefully I don't burn myself while I'm trying to put these rubber bands on. The only change we have made is we've added one extra vent hole because I discovered one area that wasn't quite filling. There was a high spot that did not have a vent, so we added that in. I'm not quite sure what happened to our point back here. Somewhere along the way we lost that. That was the original right here. So I don't know how we lost that point. All right, here we go. Okay, one of the things that I've learned and I like to do is to scrape this off before it hardens. Makes it so much easier getting out of the mold. So we'll just have to let that cool and uh, pop it out, see how it looks. All right, let's get a look at this and see what we got. Oh, 
looks really good. This is the area right here where it wasn't filling, but now with that vent there, that fixes it. The next day. All right, this stuff has all had about 12 hours to soak. I'm gonna clean it up and see how it all looks. Collars on these cams are made out of aluminum and they are really corroded badly. So these are the contacts. You have a roller here on the cam and it just opens and closes uh, with the revolution of the motor. And we can buy replacements for these, but these ones aren't too bad yet. You can see some pitting here. They get to, you know, the electrical arcing causes them to, over time, just uh, degrade. And uh, once you get to a certain point, they start to degrade faster and faster as the pitting gets worse and worse and they really start to behave badly but these ones aren't too bad uh, so we're just gonna clean them up for now and uh, save that money for something else and in the future if we have to we can always replace these I am gonna start putting this thing back together short of replating these pieces this is as clean as it's going to get I continue to feel like I need to move faster and faster on this ride. I have this nagging feeling that sitting in some field somewhere is a piece of equipment that's uh, days away from being taken to the junkyard because nobody there sees anything more than scrap value in it. And for all we know, it might be the last example existing of that piece of equipment. And once it's crushed, it's lost forever. That bothers me. Just yesterday, I found out about a ride that's sitting in a field in Arkansas. And since then, the wheels have been turning in the back of my brain, trying to figure out how I can economically get this ride from Hot Springs to Pennsylvania. This is a Sinatrol Model 30 Type 33. It's a three-point chaser, but uh, you can see by looking at the basic framework how it could easily be modified to a four-point chaser with just the addition of another cam and some contacts. Well, I just realized I put this all together backwards. All right, that looks better.
Actually, this can probably go back in. to adjust the motor. I have to admit I'm a bit fascinated by this motor. This is what is known as an eddy current motor, literally just an electromagnet and a spinning disc. It's such a simple design. If something were to bind up the mechanism, the motor would just sit there maybe humming, but it could sit like that indefinitely without burning out. It's really clever. So I think this is another part of the project that we can move over to the done column. And I still need to clean up the electrical cabinet, get that all painted, but that is a job for another day. And if you'd like to see more of this project or how it started, I've got a whole playlist. Click that link to the left and come along for the ride.